we back. Hit that like button, subscribe, people. Uh, I'm going to start this thing out, man, about this news story that happened last week. And this story, I mean, why I want to talk about it because it's, it, it shows why I have a problem with liberals and why I have a problem with conservatives. Is a girl comes out, she's on the news, and she says she has eleven children. And that she had oh, worked yeah, at she had worked at um Taco Bell at Pollo Loco for twelve years, she got laid off, and she was having an economic problem because she couldn't find no job. And what you saw is that people who are conservative mostly, and this is black, white, whoever. They jump in and they start talking about how irresponsible she is and accountability. The problem I have with conservatives and people who think like this is this. It's a difference between accountability and punishment. I'm all for holding someone accountable. But when you start talking about punishing adults, you have to think about what you really doing here so her having 11 children is bad so now you got to bring in the fathers and say where are they at um but what is done is done yep yep what is done is done but then when we get into the point where this girl she had a gofundme page the people were saying how we shouldn't give her money because she did this and she did that. And I'm saying, see, this is the problem. We can hold people accountable and educate them without punishing them harshly. Because when you punish them harshly, you're not just punishing that individual. You punishing those children. Yeah, but you that's who going to you know, no, take the but. brunt of this. But then. You have the liberals. And the liberals are saying, oh, my God, y'all guys are so bad for saying what you're saying. Um, you guys don't know her situation and all of this stuff. And I'm saying, liberals, this is the problem I have with you. Where well, you guys want to donate the money, but then don't want to hold her accountable. Yeah, you write about not punishing her because it's going to end up affecting the kids. But she need to be held accountable so that she can educate her children so they won't go on and do the same thing. Because if you just validate her poor behavior, give her money, she ain't going to learn anything from the mistakes that she made, and she's just going to go on there and do other things. So what you're going to do is give her the excuse uh, but where are the fathers? Where are the fathers? You got to rem remember she laid down with all of those men. She laid down with all of those men. Well, wait, didn't you not mind telling me? That, yeah, that, I'm that, finna get to it, that it was fake. Yeah. That, that, but I'm trying to talk, I'm using this to talk about the problems that I have with liberals and conservatives. Man, you can be talking all that. Then. So, <laughs> the problem I have with them and how they go about doing things. But then the story comes out where people said, Oh, no, it was fake that she really didn't have 11 children. I think they said she had two. And then she got fired from Taco Bell because she got caught stealing. And her boyfriend put her up to it or some shit like that to do uh, GoFundMe and people, so she can get money. And I, last time I had checked, it was like $4,000 that she had gotten from them. You can't get that money back. No, 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 no. No, you people, yeah, you can get the money back though. But my problem though with it is just the way you see from conservative. This is what when you talk about the drug war in this country, they wanted to not hold the people ac accountable who were selling drugs and doing drugs. They wanted to punish them, but what they end up doing was punishing the families. Mm -hmm. With these, uh, you know, sentences but that it, they was giving out people 15, 20 years and it was just ripping blacks and Latino family, but predominantly black families apart. 
because they just wasn't punishing those individuals they end up punishing the children too and that's why you got to hold accountable and you have to understand that with the drug war why was those people selling drugs well they were selling drugs due to automation jobs being shipped across seas at ai so the job thing is not to just punish people it's to hold them accountable but also understand that their circumstances is the reason why they was committing the crimes in the first place i said a lot from people but i love with the punishment thing they i said a lot into it it had to be their ass or somebody that they know because for, for now still now like people still have a problem with uh michael vick and his dog thing and they're like michael vick went to jail he did his time and then came out and would start doing things for dogs to but then people would still say, yeah, yeah absolutely. but you know my yeah. movie. And it yeah. like, yo, man, he yeah. did his time. Yeah. And, 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 not, what you and, want from him to got, do his time, come out and be poor, be a homeless yeah, person and still do stuff. He had like, both things happen to him. Like, you, you kind of like, come on. Like, what? Well, like, get over it. Like, it's still, to the day, the day is 20, the year is 2020, and people will still bring up, yeah, you know my mm-hmm. And that was like, what, 20? Like 2006, 2006. Yeah, two, yeah. And they're like, it was so long ago. Why are we still here? It's, but it's, but if they did something with somebody in their they family. They want people to give them that, forgiveness. Yeah, they're like, oh, well, you know, they was, that was so so long ago. And they're like, no. But if you can bring that person stuff up, I'm going to bring that up. And see, with Vic, Vic had the accountability. He was held accountable. People in the media was talking about him. He went to jail. That's the punishment. And then you saw Vic be contrite. He showed contrition. Mm-hmm. But if you still hammer that man, talking about he shouldn't be a leader at, uh, at, at, at the Pro Bowl, well, you're the bigger problem now. Vic is not the problem no more. You are. Yeah, it was like... See, and that's what my, my thing is when someone hurt you, hurt you, you have a right to, you know, vent that frustration at that person. But once that person is contrite and tell you that they're sorry... And you keep on with it. That's on you because you are failing to heal. You want to be mad. You want to be angry. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing with Michael Vick. People want to be angry at him. They want to be mad. It doesn't matter what he would say. No matter what he would do, they still going to be angry at him. Like, I had said the same thing about Floyd. I was like, now, I don't know if he continued to do it after he got out of jail. But I was like, yo. He went to jail for it. Yeah, but no contention whatsoever from Floyd. Yeah, that, and, and, and that, that, that is true. Yeah, that, I think about that, 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 that Floyd Mayweather is yeah. the Tessa Blanchard situation we just got yeah, to talking that, about. I just thought about that. Yeah, so about Flo- <laughs> Floyd never even admit that he did anything wrong. Yeah, yeah, any like, yeah I went to jail and that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's a totally different thing. But this is a thing, like I said, though, with liberals and conservatives that pisses me off. This is also, again... In this same manner with Lizio this week, where the um, personal tra- fitness trainer, Julian, Julian Michael. Michaels, comes out and she says, hey, why are we even talking about her weight in the first place? And, but she's saying she should be judged on her music. But she said, but it ain't. Yeah, but, she but, and then she said that. people shouldn't be celebrating her obesity, but they ain't going to be celebrating it when she catch diabetes. Yeah. So now all of these people start attacking Julian Michaels from the left wing. And I'm saying, and I've seen a lot of my sisters out here attacking her. But the thing is, I said before, when people start talking about obesity, when women talk about obesity, it's totally different when males is talking about obesity. Because everything with women is about desirability. Them being desired. So when you see somebody says Julian Michael, anybody says something about Lizio being overweight, the first thing they start talking about, well, she's beautiful. Nobody said anything about her being beautiful. Mm -hmm. We have a whole porn category named BBW for big, beautiful women. This has nothing to do with being obese. I mean, being with looks. This has everything to do with health and with black women. Poor thing just came out not too long ago that seven out of ten black women are overweight. No, seven I out of ten. Them, um, so, th- and then the country, what, 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 the country by 2030, 70 percent of Americans gonna be overweight. That's not a good thing for a country to be overweight. And then what is it? What the word is for? 
I I was finna say expiration date. It ain't expiration date, the uh, deceased rate. Deceased, yeah. Age is around yeah. about 60 and something. Most of the time, because we overweight, got heart yeah. condition, all this stuff. High like, tension. Yeah, so. She out here looking up, looking out for Lizzo. Yeah, so, yeah. But they think they helping Lizzo, Lizzo by validating her poor behavior. They're not. It ain't nothing wrong with trying to get better. But also, because they talked about that on the Breakfast Club and all, like, again, this is the difference where, uh, between, because we had a conversation before, it was different between women and men because DJ Ember was like, yo, because uh, as you're like, yeah, but you know, you don't, you don't want nobody to tell you something. And DJ Ember was like, no, because if I got fat and y'all came up to me and told me, hey, DJ, you're getting a little husky, you're getting a little big, he was like, that shit would make me look at myself and say, wait a minute. These people ain't telling me this because they trying to pick at me. They yeah, telling me but, this but, so I can but, get myself in shape yeah, so I can but, live but, longer. But see, that's the problem. That's the problem, though. That it, that ain't just what people are doing. So you have the people who out there yeah, who just yeah. smash on Lizzie O, fat shaming her to be fun and poke fun at her. So the people on the left wing, a lot of time is reacting to those people with, and missing the bigger picture. The bigger picture is health. They are responding to the people who saying she unattractive. So they end up validating her poor behavior by going after those people and trying to protect her from those people without understanding what understanding the people like Julian Michaels. They putting Julian Michaels in the same category as those people over there who are fat shaming her and she's not in that Category. Yeah, she's having, talking about health while those people are saying she's not desirable. And having Lizzie over here in the Laker game shaking her ass. And putting up twerking vids. Yeah, uh, like, she's doing that shit for y'all come and say, yeah, I love her beautiful. You're like, yeah. no. And that's what she said. The only thing that Julian Michael was saying is like, yo, I don't think her obesity is supposed to be celebrated. It shouldn't. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't. Yeah. But you know that what I told you though. I'm I'm looking at it, I'm saying it. Why Lizzo change up on y'all and by a couple of years she get a money right, she get a, a yeah, health weight plan. Got a money right. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, maybe so. I am guessing because I ain't seen her drop an album yet. Yeah, she Lizzo one but, of the biggest artists in the world. Yeah, but I know how that like mm, I don't know her contract situation. Like that's why I said I agree with that. Yo, she out here everywhere and I'm Warning is she getting all her money. Yeah. And the reason why I say that also because that people you talk about that girl Gabby Gabby? Gabby Sidibay. I don't know how to say how no, Gabby is it. No. Mm, no. What? No. That's not even in the same, bro. For its success. She only had that one movie. No, but yeah, but still people talked about it, you know what I'm saying? And she wasn't like like I said, yeah, she wasn't like Lizzo as a success why, but people still talked about it. she still did movies and for after a while I used to see stuff about her losing weight, and I was like, that's a damn, that's a lie. And then, recently, I seen a couple of pictures, like, yeah, she have slimmed down. And I'm yeah. like, this is going to slim down on y'all in a while. Yeah, but, and, and see, and and for me, it just. It's just right see, now, it's just right now, her career is going great, and she's like, I need to keep it going. No, because you, but the reason why it, the reason why girls like Lizzie will be the way that they are is because they've, Feel that people are attacking their beauty. That's why. And that's why she flunt herself around the way that she do. To say, nah, I'm beautiful. But she totally missed the bigger picture about health. Yeah, she'll catch you later. Yeah, that's what she missing the point on. <laughs> she'll catch you later. She, re she reacting to the people who are fat shaming her. They're saying like, yo, Iran, if you keep on, we're going to drop Lizzie on you. <laughs> right? She responding to the old folks. Yeah. Right I thought there. you told me she quit Twitter. She did. Oh, she might have quit but, but see, But see, that's what I'm saying. When all of these folks talking about Lizzie O is so confident, I'm like, no, she's not. She's showing you that she's not as confident as she tries to put on. Because if she did, and she was that confident, she would have never quit Twitter. She let you know that the stuff that people say to her on Twitter yeah. is getting to her. But no, I always say that. Because people who... Are uh, confident? Yeah, they don't give a damn. Yeah, I, I always say that. Yeah, when I hear people say stuff like that, I'm like, man, y'all lying. Even the stuff that you say that don't get to you, it get to you. Like, because if it didn't get to you, you wouldn't even mention it. Yeah. But the fact that you are mentioning it and signing it, no, they don't get it. Like, no, you just told me it got to you. Because 
if you didn't notice it or didn't know it, somebody would have brought it up and you'd be like, what? I didn't even know they said that. Mm-hmm. And keep it moving. But, yeah, it, it does affect it. All right, people. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Um, Next topic, just a quick one. Quick one. Corey Booker. Uh, leave the race. The last couple of weeks. Hey, man, somebody else, right? Uh, Mariana Wilson. Oh, yeah. Wilson? Yeah, man, left. I would have spent uh, the vote on you. You uh, talking about reparations. But Corey, you know, over the last every couple of weeks since Kamala dropped out of the race, he's been out there trying to play his race, do it, pray, pray on his race, talking about how there was no Democrats in the race. No black Democrats in the race, nothing but white people, and it was a problem, and he should get in that race. And I'm thinking to myself, this is not football. This ain't football, where you got a bunch of owners who are white, and they just didn't hire any black co- uh, coaches. That's not what this is. This is black people choosing not to vote for you, Corey. You can't be playing race on this. Black you people never do it all the other time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black people just chose not to vote for you. Because you didn't have no black agenda. They asked you what you was going to do for the black community and you start talking about criminal justice reform. All black people are not criminals, bro. They were like like a, that's what you were throwing out there. They were like, a, uh, thank you, but I want more. Yeah, <laughs> like, like what are you talking about? And so he didn't gain any traction whatsoever. With his own community. And when you run for office and you can't even get the black vote, well, black people ain't messing with you. You got major problems. At least black women were, some black women were messing with Kamala. No, no, they wasn't. All on one? No. I thought Kamala they were had, for a while. No. No, them just the Boulay, Selena Maxwells of the world. That was the, enough. The, no, it wasn't enough. <laughs> she only, the highest percentage Kamala got. In the polls with African American women, man, was like nine percent, bro. She had more support from black men, and then people like Selena Maxwell and them ruined that by trashing black men, saying black men wasn't gonna vote for her because she had a white husband. Now they ruined that because at that time she was getting like forty six percent of her support with black men, and then that tailed off. Starting to see black men in media start to get mad, get finally get mad about this. Tell me the crazy stuff is going on. <laughs> but Cory Booker, though, he never, you know, ingratiated himself with his own community. So black people didn't feel him at all. And that ain't even, you know, and Cory Booker, when he was the mayor of Newark, he started getting major attention in the media because he was doing good things. He was, um, had a great youth program up there where he was trying to get mentors for the young black in the city youth that was at risk he was doing great things but then when he started running for that senate though that's when he started taking all of the money from big pharma started getting in bed with the people on wall street trying to protect them um remember it was obama in 2012 i think it was 2012 barack obama went after um bain capital because mitt romney worked for them and Cory Booker came out caping for uh, Bain Capital. And that's when he started destroying himself on the left wing at that time. And then the pharmaceutical bill that had popped up, he was on the wrong side of it. And he just became a corporate Democrat to get in that Senate and start taking all of this money. People in Silicon Valley and all of that. And that stuff pretty much Ruin his chances. He started. The Democratic Party is moving to the left. No matter what people want to tell you in the country, is moving to the left. And he was putting himself on the wrong side of it. But he was on the wrong side of his people, though. Where African Americans didn't pay, didn't pay him any attention whatsoever. And when you did hear black people talk about him, they were trashing him. So, yep. Car is out, people. Hit that like button, subscribe. Next topic. Uh, I'm going to dive in this Lonnie Love thing, man, just because the other people was talking about it. So we might well put our little nose in it. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's yeah. Go ahead. yeah. Like, so I, I don't think I had to play the clip for you, right? 
Do I uh, have to put a clip? Nah, but people probably just say it. Like, yeah, okay, okay. But, nah, I think it's Lonnie Love, ain't it? Ain't it gone, Lonnie? Something like that. Something yeah, like that. but Lonnie Love goes on television, on the show The Real. And Kevin Hart had been talking about his wife. why he cheated. And why he cheated with his wife. Which was and, stupid. Yeah, it was stupid what he said. Then Joe Biden. Then Joe Biden come back. Joe Biden. I don't know why I call that dude Joe Biden. But Joe Biden comes back, and what he stupid. says is stupid. You know, a lot of stuff, especially when it comes to women, the stuff that come out of Joe Biden mouth more times than not is going to be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it not just, really known that, but yeah. I guess yeah, so. it is. It is with him. So she goes on here talking about how black men can't be faithful in relationships especially black men with money because they feel like they have yeah, some power of course uh Amanda Seal would agree with her yeah of course uh what my homie said Terrain Rain called her he called her a uh, Mammy Seals <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the thing Mammy is Seals. like you uh, you seen the other girl I think her name is Adrian Bala. Yeah, she was she, trying to save her yeah she was like no nah, they're all and, you know, oh, this is all men yeah. do this, and she say, "No, uh, 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 yeah, and you like, right away. Well, I'm, I want to try black men here." Yeah, and it was like, "Yeah, she tried to save you, and you didn't want to be saved, and then you gonna have to deal with this." But I'm telling you, though, I'm telling you. And the thing is, I want to ask a question. Also, like, yo, because I know uh, it was a bunch of people hot nine seven breakfast club. They did a little thing talking about it. And it was a member of caller had called in and said, well, you know, a lot of love dating a white dude. And I was like, no, she was married to a black dude. That black dude passed away. This, was she saying that with that black dude Yeah, but, when but, he was alive? Yeah, but, but see. Because I thought, because she was all up there crying and yeah, shit. Yeah, but the thing is, Smoke, with her, is that this is not the first time. Really? Right? No, no, no. Like, she been on this trashing black man path for a minute. You remember, um. Before, because you know Amanda Seals is on the show now, right? Yep, yep. They well, did, I wouldn't know that. They did, but, they mm. did the audition thing. And one of the people that they was, like, how they do the auditioning is when they want to replace, they replacing someone, they'll start having these new girls on the show. And one of the girls that they have on the show was Tisha Campbell from uh, Martin Show, Gina. Yep, yep. So she was on the show, and you know she just got a divorce from Dame Martin. yeah. So she was on there, and she was trying to tell, Tish Campbell was talking about her trying to get back in the dating scenes and find love, and Lonnie Love said, how you try dating white men? Dating outside of your race, because we as black women, we deserve to be loved. She said, I said her that no, black men can't love black women. So you, for you to be loved, then you need to go be with a white man, right? This is what she was telling him. Telling Tisha Campbell. It was other shows, other times where she mm, was doing this type of stuff, where she was trashing black dudes on her show. And I said, the thing is with some black people, not just black women, but black men as well. This is why uh, the homie Tariq and she call them bed wrench. Bed wrench and bed bow. Like Tariq always say, I don't have a problem. With people dating outside of their race. What I have a problem with is when people date outside of their race and then they come up here trying to slam black men and black women to make an excuse for them dating outside of their race. That's the problem. So when you watch her all last year, it been moving to this. And now what? She's up here talking about this white dude that she got. And then I saw an interview where she said the white man, she been with the white man for a good minute. She said he haven't even met her children, met his children yet. She hadn't met his children? No! Really? Say, I haven't even met his children. And then they say she paying all of the bills at their house. Really? And you out here shitting on black dudes for this dude? Uh. Like, are you serious? And see, this is the problem, man. This is the problem. In every race group, we have things that are bottom tier, right? Well, dudes who Lonnie Love have been in a relationship with, 
Them guys never took her serious. They never took her serious. They was over there to smash. And so she didn't have some bad experiences with some black dudes. But she, the problem is she think her experiences in reality. Yeah, and that was uh like that's the prop. Cause like I told you, it probably was some other people that talked about their thing. I think it, yeah, some uh, maybe I don't know. I don't go on a lot of stuff like that. But I mean, that was like one of the things that like Charlemagne on the Breakfast Club. He put he was like, yo, I'm tired. Like and that's why I had said that before. Like yo, I'm starting to see a lot of black dudes in media. Starting to catch on to this, and they starting to bark back a little bit. And they should. And because he was like, yo, I'm tired of this false narrative being put on black, black men. men. Every time. And then Andy went and said, well, you know, there's some statistics, some stats and stuff. And he was like, yeah. All them statistics all. are bad about black yeah. men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, yeah, all of that. And then. And, and see, but the thing, but the, the, the problem is, is this, Mo. It ain't black men do not have a problem with you holding black men accountable. Black men be trying to hold each other accountable. Yeah. But what black men don't want you to do is get on TV talking about black men can't be faithful, black men are cheater. And black dudes are looking at it saying the president of the United States of America cheated on his wife with hookers. Mm -hmm. Right? No. Matt no. Lauer cheated on his wife. You have all of these white men, Latino men, Everybody cheating, but you send up here saying it's black men. Mm -hmm. You putting well, the, the burden, face of it. yeah, it's the face of it. You stigmatizing and dehumanizing black men and saying this is what black men are, right uh, here that they bad. And then the thing that she did, like, while see, Latino and, she, and white women are saying, yeah, we treat them like goddesses. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. But so then, what you see though is. She says, this is because of slavery. And then, um, uh, Mammy Seals, she starts talking about, oh, you know, welfare and, and, and um, Jim Crow and all this stuff. And it's like, what are you guys talking about? Right? But you see this stuff and you say that these girls, what you're seeing in man is narcissism. They so narcissistic that everything is about them. And because they only date black guys, only being involved with black guys, they have no clue. Yeah, no clue yeah. what's going on in white America, Latino America, or yeah. Asian America. That, and, but then when the little Latino girl, Adrian, tried to tell her, she's like, no, you shut up, little Latino girl. I want to talk about black men being bad. And I'm just thinking about it. They sent right to that little Asian girl who is dating who? Young Jeezy, a rapper. And that girl, every time I don't watch the real, but I see it on the website, they keep talking about how she keep talking about how good Jeezy is treating her. But, so it, what but, are y'all talking about? But, she, but see, the thing is, though. Oh, uh, because she's Asian? No, no. The thing is, is see people like Amanda Seals and a Lonnie, see, they'll be jealous of her. See, they'll uh, tell you that, like, Lonnie will look at you and say, oh, he treating you well because you like skin. <laughs> right? That's what they'll do to her. You know, they, they, you like skin and you, 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 you're a different race. And that's what Amanda Seals will tell her, too. Oh, you're a different race. See, they always going to find a way to fit their narrative, to hate black men mm -hmm. and put black men down. Let me tell you about this video, though. It's a video that I saw, and this is something that I have said and thought about and talked about a lot of times. I never talked about it on the show, but I did want to talk about it today. And one of the things that I would say about black men and black women, both, is that a lot of these people are not strong enough to be with black people. And when you hear black men, and black men start saying, oh, man, you know, black women are militant and black men, black women are angry and, and, and all of this type of stuff. They're telling you that they're not strong enough to deal with black women. And what I mean by that is this. Black women have a right to be angry and have an edge to them. They come from 244 years yeah. and 100 years of slavery. This is the same way with African-American men. African-American men have an edge to them. They, 356 of them are getting shot and killed by police every day. They have the lowest 
life expectancy. More edu- uneducated in the country. Their problems and the stuff that they have in their life never get talked about. They have no place to vent their frustrations or whatever. So, yeah, you're going to have black men that's on edge. You're going to have black women who have some edge to them. To now, but see, no, but see, but, but see, yeah. But the thing is, is nobody wants to admit that. So you have all these black women running around talking about, I'm a strong black woman and, and, and black men tough and all this stuff. But at the end, what you see is that they are not strong enough to be with black people. And what I want to talk about is this. I saw this interview with Lena Horne. And she was doing this video with Nikki uh, Giovanni. If you guys want to go see it, check it, check that interview out. And Lena Horn, they were asking her about her her first husband, and he was a black man. And Lena said, "I failed him." And the woman like, "What?" She said, "Yeah, um, she said I wasn't strong enough to be with a black man." She said, I wasn't strong enough to be with a black man. She said, all the problems that black men have in this country. She said, I had to face it. I had to face it. What this country have done to black men. She said, all the things that they do, the frustrations and stuff that they have. She said, I wasn't strong enough. She said, what he needed, I couldn't give it to him. So she was, you know, Lena Horn like look Mick Race or whatever. She found it easier to go be with a white man. Cause it was easier for her to be with a white man than it was a black man. This is the same thing, Smoke, that I saw with Carrie Champion. Where they were asking her about Meghan Merkel and Prince Harry. And the woman asked her, oh, are we happy for Meghan Merkel? And she said, yeah. And she asked her, do you date outside of your race? She said, well, I don't like to. I prefer black men, but I find it easier. I find it easier to be with a white man than being with a black man. Because all of the problems that I have as a black woman and he has as a black man. She's telling you she's not strong enough to be with a black man. It's not strong enough to be with a black man. And this is the same stuff that you hear from these brothers. The frustration, the anger that black women have because of their conditionings that they grew up in. A lot of us are not strong enough to deal with a black woman. And it was so refreshing to hear Lena Horne admit this. She was so honest about it. She was like, no. Because of the privilege that I come from, my life, yeah, I wasn't strong enough. And I felt him. And she said, I have to live with that for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. That no, he was a great man. Great man. But the way this country had done him to him in his life, she said, I just wasn't strong enough. And I wish I was. But we don't want to have that um, that honest conversation. So a lot of conversations people yeah. in the world don't want to have. We don't want to have that honest conversation about attraction and what attract people to people, man. We we don't want to have that conversation. So with Lonnie and and some of these other girls out here, when Charlemagne he talks about hey all of this attacking, he started see, he happy to see. Black men now start to speak out. This is what Ebro was talking about. And Ebro on there, he when Ebro, he was like, hey, for all of these black women out here who's saying it, what are you doing to help these black dudes to make them feel mm-hmm. empowered? What, what are you doing? Got, yeah, because... Uh, and what, and, and, what, and, and uh, Lost Lost out, she was like, yeah, we, we, we got a lot of sisters that are. Yeah, there, but... Oh, he, yeah, we, you know... But to see, it's but the no. majority of black women are out there holding it down. But we still got to deal with no, these ones. And my thing is, what, what I took from him, that what he said. He was like, no, I ain't talking about them. Yeah, of course I know about them. I'm talking about the ones who are on mainstream, the ones who are on TV, who yeah. have influence. Yeah, but see. And that was another thing that I always say that, yo, when you have people, like, the people who have the more power to me in the world are people 
people on TV. Yeah, but see. Who in your face giving you information. Like, you probably may not be thinking it. Because that, that's why I said I was surprised and I'm kind of happy to yo these dudes. Because you don't hit too much of it. I ain't hit too much of it. Like, now, you said because you be on Twitter more than I do. You would hear Ebro going back and forth with this. But I ain't read. I rarely heard Charlemagne say anything about it. Oh, and, and all the people, but now I'm like, no, they yeah. do be seeing this, and them they starting to get tired of it. Like, yeah. wait a minute, but hold see, on. Now. But see, this is this is um, this is of the new black media, the new black media here on YouTube, black people on Twitter and Instagram, black people, we be talking about this stuff, right? And now you see it catch on. All the people now are talking about it because these women are in the mainstream media, boy. That's all they do is attack black men. Our uh, is this young sister on the internet. She um her name is Erica Losaya or something like that. And she had done this thing about um uh, the numbers where these black girls named Chrissy Way. That's why and that's the thing too. When you hear all these black women who say this dumb stuff about black men, you already know who they got it from. It either Chrissy's Way Cynthia G, Feminist Joan, Jamela Lemieux, they say the same dumb stuff over and over again. And it comes directly from those women. And I said, these women ain't doing no research or nothing. They just listen to these women and just go out here spearing it. So for the, like, all last year, black men and black women been out here going to war with them and saying, no, why y'all lying about black men? So this young sister, she did a thing where she wanted to do um, a thread on black love. So, because the women, you know, they sitting around talking about black men don't love black women. And they like these Latinos and they like these white girls and all of this fooling and stuff. And she started putting out the stats and the statistics about who black men marry and who black win, women marry. And you see a down all of the economic bracket for 100,000 to 80,000, 70, no, 40, 50, whatever, black men overwhelmingly marry black women, overwhelmingly in relationship with black women. But I said before, the thing that people don't understand is a lot of these black women that you hear saying this stuff, they didn't marginalize and draw down their dating pool. They didn't drew down their dating pool. All of them black guys who you talking about who dating black women, they don't want to date any of those black men. When they start talking about black men dating white women and Latino, these girls are talking about athletes, rappers, and actors. Yep, yep. Those are the dudes who they want to date. Let me tell you, I saw this girl on Twitter, and this is what she said. She said, I used to be a huge Jamie Foxx fan. But I don't like Jamie Foxx anymore because I met one of Jamie Foxx's bodyguards and he told me that after shows, Jamie would pick women, have him to pick women to come back to his room and have sex with him, and he didn't pick any black girls. I said, so you want black women to go whore themselves out for Jamie Foxx? No. I'm glad that none of my sister was being picked to go whore themselves out for Jamie Foxx. But see, this is the thing that these women want to be. They want to be this way. They go around chasing male patriarchy in any displays of it. The other black brothers who are dating sisters and the sisters who are building with them, they call those sisters pygmies. If you like black men or you pro-black, you're a pygmy in, in these women's view. So this girl, she did this thing, Erica Lashat, and it was a beautiful thread. If you guys can go, you know, see her Twitter thing, you'll see it. And all of the beautiful black couples was up there, you no know, celebrating black love. And here come all of the bad, want to be bad wrench. They want to be. But the problem is the white dudes are not hollering at them, and that's why they so frustrated. They want to try to escape blackness using their vajayjays, but these 
white men are not attracted to them. And that's what I told y'all about the little chick, Sophia Nelson. She blamed black men for white men having bad views of black women when white men is the one who created damn near all the stereotypes about black women looking masculine, black women having nappy hair. We talked about the uh, dude who passed away not too long ago, Don Amis with the Ruckus girls, calling them mm -hmm. nappy-headed hoes. White men created all of these stereotypes about black women. But Sophia Nelson blamed black men for her inability to keep a white man, right? Because this is what's underneath this. These chicks want to date white guys. Now, white guys in America are the number one buyers of black prostitutes, but only 2% of white men marry black women. They do telling you they see you as a sexual object, sisters. They, they are all right with that. They telling you this. So... Once this sister had did this 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 thread, it got like fifty seven thousand likes and had a bunch of retweets. But then she got she started getting attacked by these other black sisters, and she said, "You know what? I started to realize." She said, "Some of my black sisters." Uh, one of the biggest proponents of white supremacy that we have in this country. She said, if a light-skinned girl, hell, even dark-skinned black girls, post pictures of them in a relationship with a white man, black women cheer the hell out of it. But she said, if we as black women who are pro-black said we love black women, we're not black enough and get called pygmies. Yes. What do you mean black women? Black men. What? If they post picture with black men, yes. Yeah, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> but get called pygmies. And I said, that's exactly what it is. And I said, you never hear these black girls use the word pygmy with white women, Latino women, Asian women. They only use it towards African American women who are in relationships with black men. You know the reason why? Because these black women believe that dating black men is black women dating down. And they tell you this. Love don't pay the bills. Yeah, I've heard that. I ain't dating down. But I said, what these girls are doing, these girls being transition partner, first they try to escape blackness with a college degree. It fails. Then they start trying to escape blackness through marriage. That's why I tell you, 74% of black women first marriage end in divorce. Not because they men are cheating on them, not because they men are abusing them, but because of economics. And they file for divorce 94% of the time. And so when they, if they don't get smutted out by some dude in their early 20s or late 20s, when they get in their 30s, they start setting their sights on trying to finesse some white dude. That's what they do. They trying to escape blackness. And so when they start dating these white guys, now they have to make an excuse because they know. See, they didn't been around other black women and they know that other black women don't believe in dating outside of their race. So they got to have an excuse. And that excuse is, oh, I didn't want to date outside of my race, but black men are so awful that I had to. Mm -hmm. I had to. I didn't have no other choice. And that's a conversation that got these dudes out here like, nah, we tired of y'all. Yes. And and they just keep doing it. it, it like, and, and that's why I said, like, all of these, and another thing, too, um, that's going on. Good thing, too, because them dudes normally be the niggas up here who are, what's the word? Uh, they ain't sim, but they just give me into everything. And like, yeah, you right. No, 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 no. Not all the time. Like, not all the time. Sometimes they need to be need to be checked. And in this case, every time, cause and and I used to see that. That's why I was surprised. I guess I was surprised because I remember them day the day that Kevin Hart got caught cheating and dudes on Twitter telling me, "Yeah, black man, we take the air for this." And I'm like, yeah, "No, we, we don't, don't take no air for nothing." We had a woman came out and stop generalizing and protecting yeah. the action and views of some black men on all black men. When the little black girl came out here and lied about um being kidnapped, did black women come out here and say, "Yo, black women, we take the L for this"? 
But see, this is the thing when they call, I think it was Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh coined the phrase feminazi. And. Maybe I don't know. I'm yeah, yeah. It, I don't, was, I don't watch it, shit. it was feminazi. I don't watch this shit either, but I had caught that shit years ago. And why he called them that is real. See, the same thing that these white people do. And when the sister said, when Erica called them the biggest proponent of white supremacy, the reason why she said that is because it's true. Because they do the things that white people do. See, I've said this before that when we talk about black on black crime, people, black women be, black women are included in that. These black feminist women. So then they got some sense. And that's when they start saying, no, people commit crimes with people who they live around in proximity to. So if black people live around black people, then they're going to commit crime against black people the same way white people are going to commit crimes against white people. Latinos are going to commit crimes against Latinos. But when black feminist women is able to other themselves, now it is black men abuse us, black men rape us. Well, if black men live in the same community as you and men in general rape women and abuse women, then black men are going to abuse black women, rape black women. But guess what they also do? The same thing that white people do. See, when something happens in Chicago, New or uh, uh, Baltimore, it's black people this, black people that, black people culture bad, all of this. But when white people shoot up these schools, you don't hear anybody say, "Where's the white fathers?" Mm -hmm. Right? You got seventy-five percent of the police that's shot and killed in this country is killed by white people. You never hear people say, "Yo, what's wrong with white people and they gun culture? What's wrong with white folk?" The same thing when stuff happens with black women. See, R. Kelly goes around and rape these little kids. Now you got the Jamela Lemuse and the feminist Jones. Them all talking about R. Kelly, but nobody is talking about. The 30 some percent of young black boys who register having sex between the age of 12 and 13 years old I with black that, women I who were in their 20s. Nobody talks about that the same way all of these that. teachers sleep with all of these students. Sleep with all of these students and none of these women say anything about that. Like with the ba the, uh, the rapper, the baby, he comes out and hit peanut picks leak. And all of these women is out here talking about his penis and all of this stuff. But when a woman's stuff leak, it's, oh, y'all invading her privacy. See, in domestic violence cases, if you guys think about all the, the, the stuff that was taking place over the last five, six years with the players, black men that was in college or the Ray Rice situation or Tariq Hill situation or the other running back who went to Chicago from Kansas City. What you was hunt? green hunt. What you see in all of those cases is that the women was the aggressors. They abused the men, and then when the men hit back, the women came out and said the men are bad. You know the reason why? Because this society, especially with black men, they only see us as predators, and they never see us as victims. Oh, with the Bow Wow situation. Yes! When they was... When his girlfriend it, beat him up, they yeah. were laughing about it. Mm-hmm. And back, saying... Go back. And saying that it was okay because if he would have... Laughing about it and said, yo, it was better than he... Because that was he, bro. was saying, yo, it been better. It better for you, though. We laughing at you, but at least you didn't hit her because then you are being a whole lot of... Yes. And they were like, what? Uh-huh. But then also take on the Jay-Z salon thing. When J Salon yeah. beat up Jay Z, what and, it, and 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 to see the same, my thing is it's the hypocrisy of it all, Smoke. That's what get me. See, when Jay Z Salon beat up Jay Z, it was well, what did he do? What did he do? But if men point out the fact that a woman beat them up, mm -hmm. and that's why he hit back. No, the men is bad. The same way. When a man sees a woman get raped, and he say, what was she wearing? What was she wearing? Or this why is a, did you go to the college yeah, party drinking they, or whatever. Alcohol? But these women do the same thing to men, but it's perfectly fine. Like I said before, men, they'll say stuff like, 
Uh, don't slut shame. Don't slut shame. In the next sentence, men ain't nothing but dogs. Still slut shaming a dude. Yeah, slut shaming a dude. But I'm telling you, the problem is in this country uh, that we have been conditioned in this country to never see black men as victims, but always see them as predators. And man, that shit is in some of our women. They have been conditioned to see this shit the same way. But uh, what you also see is the narcissism, narcissism that plays with these women. They don't even see the plight of white women, the plight of Latino women. This is what I was saying in the beginning when you seen like R. Kelly, uh, R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, and some of them. These black girls was getting behind this because some of their victims, they victim was black. But for a minute, with Nelly, yeah, his victim was a Latino chick. Black girls were like, forget her. We don't give a damn about her. They didn't even acknowledge. They like, mm, whatever. Saying Rose Sim had a mixture, right? Yeah, he was, he had a mixture, but one of the big people that he had did it was a uh, a black girl who had said it that he had done something to her. But so what you see for and and then you seen it from um old Craig Mack, Craig Mack, rapper, not Craig Mack, uh, KRS One, the black uh -huh. woman who started um. <laughs> uh, Me Too movement where they asked her because she looked like Craig Mack mixed with oh, K. Sure up, she do she do bro she do shut up. but a girl had asked her okay I know that the black men should go to jail but the white men should be going to jail too right and she said it ain't my responsibility to go after white men so she asked her she said so your thing is you just trying to lock black men up Yes, that's what it is. And see, this is when I tell you earlier about um, relationship. And then and, 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 and the, the, the women, they will also say, oh, we just trying to hold black men accountable. And I'm like, but you also wait, wait, to... wait, 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 wait. They say, we trying to hold black men accountable. And I'm like, when black men call y'all whores, sluts, cunts, and gold diggers, they trying to hold you accountable too. They trying to hold you accountable too, but when black men say this stuff about you and, and, and women, you say, no, black men can't say this, but then they come back and trash black men in the same manner and say, well, we just trying to hold them accountable. Well, black men were trying to hold you accountable too. So nobody is listening to anybody. So nothing is getting done. Mm -hmm. But you have, and see, my thing is like, with, with, this feminist stuff, and I don't even really call it feminist. I call it misandrous because that's what it is. That's what these women are. They practice in misandry. They have a contempt and a hatred for black men. But when you see these white women, you don't hear them out here talking about black men, white men trash, white men garbage, white men is the weakest link. You don't see that. You see them say cisgender men. It's great, man, and they still wrong for that. But what these militant messengers is doing is putting the bullseye on black men and saying, no, they are the problem. When the same thing that black men, some black men are doing, all other race of men are doing too. But we are the ones who are getting stigmatized for it. And my problem that I have with it, Smoke, is this. Think about all the young kids, man. The young kids that 12, 13, 14 years old, young black boys. And this is one of the problems I used to have, you know, with young black women when men who have internalized their pain incorrectly and start generalizing and projecting the views and action of some women on all women going around saying whore, bitch, slut, or whatever. What are these young black girls thinking when they hear this? What is the young black boys Hearing now when they constantly hearing black men trash, black men garbage, and all of this stuff. And what you see is that we have people in our community, bro, who have been hurt. But then when the allies start trying to tell them that, hey, all black men are not like this, all black women are not like this, you see a refusal, a refusal of these individuals, man, to heal. They don't want to heal. 
They want you to just keep indicting black men. And I said, the thing is, is this stuff is able to be on TV. Mm. See, with this cancer culture, if a man, black man say something sexist or somebody say something, then they talk about counseling that person. But Lonnie Love can be on there saying whatever she wants to say about black men. Mm. Uh, Feminist Jones, all of them. Oh, and get cheered like, for it. it. It didn't, you know, you had, a, like I said, it was a few people who talking about, but not a lot of people came at, like, and I could be wrong. Maybe it was a lot of people. Like I said. Talking I, about Lonnie Love. Yeah. Now, it was a lot of people talking about it. And I was like, you won't see her today or, yeah, because I think that they have, they, yeah, because they have like on Thursday or uh, Wednesday mm-hmm. or Thursday. And you've seen people start to talk about it. But I was like, you, you won't see her coming out and saying, yo, I apologize. I, I, I yeah, said not. anything wrong. No, just keep on going. No, she's not. And see, this is my, when I had said a long time ago, I had done this video here and I had said, yo, uh, the, the 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 militant feminist misandrist women that's in the main screen, they are now becoming the Larry Elders and the Candace Owens of the left wing. See the black conservatives over there, they have them the people that you see on Fox News, uh, on talk radio, they have them on there to say stuff about black people in the black community that these white people believe already. But if they white people said it, they'll be called racist. But now you have these women on the left wing who are doing this stuff. And this is the stuff that these white people already believe. And see, this is the thing with Hillary Clinton. When they, Hillary Clinton was out there calling people, uh, uh, Bernie, not Bernie Sanders, but Donald Trump voters, a uh, basket of deplorables. And I always said the thing that nobody talked about is one in four of her voters believe the same stuff about black people that, Trump voters believe. And see, that is who the audience is. That's who the audience is. And, and the reason why this stuff is so bad, and I, I, if I have it, the thing, I'll put it up on the screen for you guys. It's this thing that was going around on the website 4chan. And the dude said, how do you defeat social justice? And if you guys don't know, 4chan is a website where the white supremacists Rome, don't ask me why I be over there, but I do. But how do you defeat social justice? You defeat social justice with social justice. He says, so if you look, we have an opportunity here to defeat the social justice warriors. He said, how we do that is with bitter black women. He said, there's a lot of bitter black women out here that blame black men for everything. So what we do if we follow those people pages on YouTube and we listen to the stuff that they say and we create fake black women Twitter accounts pretending to be black women and we trash as black men. And so then these black women will create the outrage. And that's when black men will start trying to defend themselves against these women. But it will really be us. So on Twitter, the last the last year, towards the end of last year, a lot of black men and black women start to figure this out. They like, yo, man, these are some bots. This ain't black women saying this stuff. And I'm like, no, it's not. But it is some black women. It's Feminist Jones. It's Chrissy Way. It's Cynthia G. Is it black girl named Kimmy Tubes? This is where these white supremacists are getting this information from. Jamela Lemieux as well. And they just repeating these women. Words. And creating fake Twitter accounts. Last year, it was this girl. Her name was Jess Mess or some shit like that. And she had one of these channels. And a black girl realized that, wait a minute, that's me. That's me picture yeah so she confronted the girl tell her to take the stuff down she didn't but then a girl named kyra kai murder she go by kai murder she um did some investigate found out that it was a racist white girl from massachusetts but every tweet that she had on there was black man ain't shit black man trab 
black men don't deserve black women. They only deserve us black queens and all of this stuff. And we should divest from black men. Come to find out that black women have been donating money to this girl, y'all. Then recently, it was a black dude on there. Uh, supposed to have been a black dude, but it was a white guy. Turned out to be a racist white guy. Had a picture of a black dude. And he said, if black women always ask me why I don't date black women, he said, because I ain't into bestiality. And then the black dude, this tweet blows up, and the black dude sees it, and he's like, hold on, partner, that me. That me. You got my picture. Now, all of these black women on here, they were smashing on this black dude because they didn't know that it was really a white dude. And people were like, yo, the sisters didn't even apologize to this dude. I said, they didn't even know. They didn't even know. But the, but the black Twitter and black YouTube have been infiltrated by these white supremacists, man. Have been infiltrated by them. And so now when you're on Twitter and you see something like a anime AV or a black woman picture, but it ain't got no photos. In the on the little side, you people been on Twitter longer than we have. They supposed to know this. Yeah, yeah, but and it ain't got none of them, and it's just a black woman picture, and she trashing black people, black men. That's a white person, bro. That that is a white person, bro. And it's the same thing with black sisters. If you see dudes on there talking about beastiality, I thought we were running a little long on this topic. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, beastiality and stuff like that. Hey. Them people ain't black, man. There's a bunch of bots on there trying to cause friction between black men and black women. But it is some out there you who are really doing this stuff, and y'all know who the old folks are. All right? Hit that like button, people. Subscribe. Next topic. What you got, big baby? We talked about uh this, that, that, that documentary. We, no, not the documentary. But we talked about people that finally, finally started uh, catching on to Oprah and her, her boldness. And... I'm guessing she didn't like that, <laughs> or or I, I I don't know. I heard like a couple of things like in because I seen the day that Fifty Cent post been praising her because she stepped away from the Russell Simmons documentary. I said, but eh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like I ain't praising her for for some. I ain't praising her for that, especially because I don't really know the full story. Because one story is on TMZ, uh, if two different websites. One TM, on TMZ, they were like, yo, she's stepping away from it. Because of all the backlash. I think it was something like that. Because of all the backlash she'd been catching. And she also said that she they had some creative differences. Her and the producer. Yeah, that. But then on another website, they were like, you know, she stepped away because she found some discrepancies in the woman report. And I was like, uh, I know that wrong. Because on the TMZ, they said, no, she still believed that woman. Yeah, but she said so, that in, in her. She said, she tried. To, and but But she tried to say that. In her release, that I still believe that these women's stories supposed to be told, and I support them one hundred percent in telling their stories. And so, though I'm like, eh, no, how how you gonna say on one point that it's that, that she bleed is some discrepancies, and that's why she pulled away because Rosa Simmons made me innocent. Then and on another thing, we got her saying, no, nah, she still believed it. So that I'm like, eh, no, and then I'm like, fifty cent, I'm like, don't be praising her because no, like. And we don't even know how far, how full alone that documentary has got done. Like that documentary could be ninety percent done. That means that she yeah. was there for all of that. She just yeah. pulled away right when it finna get released, so she don't catch no backlash. Yeah. And I'm like, no. Nah. Then you throw in the fact that she just sat here and said, "No, nah, I still believe that." Yeah. They ain't know she pulling away because and that and that why I said, "Yo, I don't know what to believe," but I'm knowing because. The other website is me to take out. They are, some of these people are still looking at Oprah like that auntie, that grandma, mm -hmm. like she ain't gave you a car or something. Yeah. She ain't gave you none. And I'm like, no, she just sat here and told me that, no, she still believed that. But, not answering the question of, we've been asking you about Harvard Weinstein. You believe in women? Yeah. yeah. And then, I also don't act like I don't know the fact that, it two things, that one, we did a, I might have to link that, we did a whole video about but it was a Dr. John, some John. Uh, uh, John. John of God. Yeah, John of God. When you was over there, what that dude? In Brazil. 
And then now the fact that it was a I think it was a white girl who was saying that yo, you she met you and then you introduced her to Hobby nah, Watson. That was that was yeah, I thought it was a white girl. Yeah, it was a different like, person. A different person. And they were like, cause that was the thing like I heard people talk about. Like, yeah, well, she didn't know the um Kaibro them they were talking about how people had started coming out. And they were like, Well, she didn't really know no. No, she knew one of them chicks said that she introduced him. Five years ago. So it like no, she Man, knew this but served her up to, to Harvey Weinstein like she was a whore. And they're like, no, like, she knew this. Yeah. And it like, thing is, y'all just not asking her these questions. Yeah, nobody is. And see, and also, now this, she right? get the scapegoat this thing with Russell Simmons and say, that, yo, I, I ain't a part of it, but I'm still sitting here asking the question. What but, about Harvey Weinstein? Yeah, but then, you remember, she got, she got the heat from, um, she got the heat from the Michael Jackson documentary where, it came out that there's some of the other stuff that was false in the show. And my mm-hmm. whole thing with Oprah is that look how dirty she is. This woman was all up in a Michael Jackson house eating chicken and shit with what? his mom and stuff. Uh, Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons and told her how to do yoga and lose weight and all of that stuff. Have big time friends mm-hmm. with Russell. But see, this is the thing about Oprah Winfrey, probably. This is the thing with Oprah Winfrey, and this is the same thing that you see with Lonnie Love. Their audience is middle of America, at home, white women. And that's who they cater to. They cater to that group of women, bro. It was no different from Barack Obama running for president of the United States of America. And then you saw him distance himself from black America. Because that is the audience who these people are catering to. And see, this is the reason why Colin Kaepernick couldn't be in the NFL because Colin Kaepernick was catering to black folk. In the NFL, they catering to white people. Mm-hmm. The Trump voter, the rural white community. And that's who Oprah Winfrey... Even though uh, they players are 70 black. black. Yeah, but that's who Oprah Winfrey have been catering to forever is those white women, bro. But black women see her and they... Celebrate her because they wanted to see a black woman do well. And they happy for Oprah Winfrey for success. But I always say, we cannot cheer black people on, individuals on, when they working against the better interests of the collective. And that's what Oprah Winfrey had been doing. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, yo, yeah. Like this. And soon I saw it, I was like, oh. Because at first I was like, oh, I see. I get that. Them people coming out here getting in your air mm-hmm. made you change up. But then I'm like, no. As I keep reading, I see, no, yeah. you still full of shit. Yeah, and see, then I have to see, do more see, thinking on it. Yeah, like, see, no, mm, no. Yeah. See, 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 it could be b- t- both things, though, Smoke. It could be her he- also hearing that heat coming from the black community. And it also could be. Her also playing the card of, well, I want to support these women but not be a part of the project so she won't piss off those white women and and piss off the people who's in the feminist world at the same time. See, she ain't going to come out here and say, yeah, I'm distancing myself from these women. I don't believe them in their story because she don't want to make those women, those the white women and these feminist black chicks to be angry at her and say Oprah is... Mm. Doing stuff for male approval Cause that's what they attack Oprah for Cause this is what they attack All the other black sisters Who be speaking up on the behalf of black men And saying yo This is bull crap what y'all are doing These white men deserve to go to jail just as well As mm-hmm. these black dudes saw. So then the black women will start attacking these sisters Saying oh you just doing it for male attention And male approval You'll pick me boo And now I'm like yo uh, No I, I ain't praising her for sure, I need like, like I said, they had the little dude up there, little white dude up there asking him about Jeffrey Epstein, which I still didn't believe that picture, but that's just me. They could Photoshop it, but you know when Harvey Weinstein right now is in court, I don't know if he in court right now, but he might be. He might be in court on trial for his stuff. I want to know. They're gonna have that sit down with Oprah and say, "Hey, Oprah, you know anything about this?" 
Because mm-hmm. I ain't seen it. Nobody asked her about Gail, it. Gail, I know that's your best friend. Go ahead and sit, have that sit down with your best friend and yeah, talk about Gail, eating. Gail friend wouldn't do. I ain't know that. Yeah. I wasn't really, I, and see, I wasn't the really whole, sure. Yeah, and see, that's the reason why I said before. Both we had to with, sit down. With Michael Jackson, Bill Cosby, and R. Kelly, they was using these guys as a decoy. As a decoy to put the attention on them while all of these white men was getting away with it. Now, Cosby, Bill, uh, R. Kelly, all of these dudes, I believe all these dudes were supposed to go to jail. Every last yeah. one of them did the goddamn crime, you do the time. But guess what? The white boys, yeah, they had deserve to go to jail too. Mm-hmm. No, I said, um, other than Epstein, all the other dudes, I ain't seen nothing, nothing from them going to court or anything. Yeah, yeah he going to court now. Her, yeah, her, her her one thing. But Kevin Spacey, all his goddamn people wind up dead. All the people he he in cruise, I think it's like three or four of them now that didn't die. What I think was it? I think I don't know. I think I think I seen somebody one of them do. I think they had something to do with that. And I think he got they say he hung himself or something like that. Yeah, it, it, maybe it's a lot of stuff. People yeah, maybe it was somebody else. But yeah, and it like what about like yo when these like. We ain't seen R. Kelly. R. Kelly, he already in jail, and his shit getting worse. Uh, Bill Cobb, he already there. We don't, we don't know about this Russell Simmons thing. And, and, and see, my thing is... Michael Jackson has passed away. But with it, is that just look at what happened, though. You're talking about three black dudes. R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, and Bill Cosby became the face of this Meanwhile, it was 60 or 70 white men. Mm-hmm. 60 or 70 of them. From Hollywood to NBC, the new, yeah, the Fox news, news. Yeah, the new industry, all of that. But them guys' story went totally out of the way. Movie while the actors. black dude stuff is mainstream every single time. And if you don't notice that, and you black out here, Mm-hmm. Something wrong with you? Well, I think even Chris Albertsons had a, a sexual assault. Yeah, people just forgot all about yeah, that. All of it just took back seat. Well, all right, people, hit that like button, subscribe. Next topic, I'm gonna do a little quick thing right here, just to talk about, you know, some of the stuff that's going on in the presidential race because this shit's gonna get crazy in 2020, bro. Real crazy. So the polls came out last week. Friday, and it says that uh, Bernie Sanders had took a three-point lead in Iowa. He's taking a two- or three-point lead in New Hampshire, and he's been closing grounds in Nevada. So, um, Joe Biden, Joe Biden is in fourth place in Iowa, and I think he's in third or fourth place in New Hampshire. See, Joe Biden been betting 100% on the black vote to save him um, on Super Tuesday. But it's problems with this. It's major problems with his strategy that he has. And the problem with his strategy that he has is this. As you look at Pete Buttigieg, well, them people wouldn't get that many votes anyway. Yeah, but... Uh, no, I was thinking before that, but go ahead. Pete Buttigieg, Joe Biden, and Elizabeth Warren voters. They voters tell a story that I think the media is missing. When you ask them, are they enthusiastic about voting for their respective candidate? They say no. It's like 29% of Pete Buttigieg voters say they're enthusiastic about voting for him. It's like 40-some percent Joe Biden. And Elizabeth member is around the same. But 67% of Bernie Sanders voters say they're enthusiastic about voting for him. But then when you ask, they ask Joe Biden voters, could they change their minds? It's like 74% of them said they could. But then when they asked him who their second choice is, it's Bernie Sanders. Same thing, 
with Elizabeth Warren voters. Same thing with Pete Buttigieg voters. So you know what is going on here. What you hearing from the American people on the left wing is they telling you they prefer Bernie Sanders to be the nominee, but they questioning his electability. But they are not enthusiastic about none of these other candidates that they voting for. And mm-hmm. that going to create a problem. And this is the reason why. When you have enthusiastic voters, that means that those voters are going to people going to be people who are going to knock on doors. They're going to be people who are going to make phone calls. That means that are going to be people on election day that's going to fill up they little minivans. The women going to have their minivans and they're going to go pick up their daughters, they, <laughs> they sons, their grandmothers, neighbors, and get them to the polls and vote. But when people are not enthusiastic about voting, what you see from those people is they tend to just go down there and vote. And some of them don't. If, and that's what I said you seen in 2016 with black people. People talked about it was black folks who places like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and uh, Michigan where black people went out to the polls. A lot of them voted down ballot, left the presidential ballot blank. Why go? Because you vote on Don Ballard. You have things like minimum wage. Oh, okay. And then you may like the uh, person who's running for the Senate or whatever. Just don't like the person who's running for president. Mm. So it's so many things on the environment and uh, judges, so many other things that be on the ballot. Uh, you know, because you get to pick who your, super, your superintendent is at the school, your sheriff, all of that type of shit you can vote on, on the Don Ballard. Well, I'm telling on myself. Yeah, <laughs> but um, so that's what down ballot voting means. So, but then you got the other black people who just not enthusiastic about voting for these people, and they like, yeah, I I'll hold my nose and vote for Hillary. But those people ain't yeah, that's what they were doing. I hold my nose and vote for Hillary, but man, man yeah, I don't want to. And so you see that same thing with Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, and with Pete Buttigieg voters. But the people are watching the mainstream media, though, the NSNBC, CNNs, and CBS, and they seeing these people condition them about Bernie Sanders' electability. But these people are showing you 100% that they want to vote for Bernie Sanders. And... Joe Biden is depending on the black vote entirely too much here, man. Because let me tell you something about my people. My people are going to follow a winner. That's what they're going to do. In 2007, in December, Barack Obama was losing the African-American vote 85 to 15% to Hillary Clinton. That dude won the, I, the state of Iowa and black people turned on Hillary Clinton ass so fast, bro. Just because Obama had won that state. It was like black people were sitting around saying, wait a minute. Let's see if these white folks up here in Iowa vote for a black dude. And he won a predominantly white state, and that was enough for black people to jump ship. Mm-hmm. Bro, and I- then he went. He And then you think about how powerful it was, Smoke. Obama won Iowa. Then he lost New Hampshire. I think it was about two, three points. And they people had had him win in that state. But he lost it. Then he went to Nevada and he lost it. But because of that one state of Iowa, it shifted the whole dynamic of the race. Because South Carolina came. Hillary Clinton them was high fiving all of those people that was on her campaign. They just knew they was gonna win South Carolina. Then Obama took that state, and the next morning, Hillary Clinton started going racial. That's when Bill Clinton was out there talking about, yo, man, this whole thing is a farce. This was 10 years ago. Barack Obama would be shining our shoes. I was like, oh, shit, they in trouble. Can't so no shit like that. Huh? You can't yeah, say no shit yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It went racial immediately. So then Obama, it goes to Super Tuesday, and Obama rack up in the South. 
with black voters. Black voters delivered Obama all of these victories. So the way that they allocate the delegates, Obama ran up all of these delegates in the southern states. So Obama could have lost the rest of the states in the country 60 to 40 to Hillary Clinton, but she was never going to be able to make it up, the difference. And that's how Obama became the nominee of the party in 2008. Now you watching it and I, you watching the problem with Joe Biden and he betting on black people. But I'm telling you, if Bernie Sanders take two of the first three states, black people going to turn on him and they already, I mean, turn on Joe Biden and they already letting him know that now when they tell him that they're not enthusiastic about voting for him and that Bernie Sanders is their second choice. If he starts winning and Joe Biden is coming in third and fourth place, black people are going to switch up on him. And one of the biggest problems that they have also is my, Mayor Bloomberg, man. Mayor Bloomberg is down there spending damn near $200 million down in the Super Tuesday state. That dude is a hot moderate. Hot moderate. Bloomberg. So guess who he going to pull votes for? It ain't going to be Elizabeth Warren and it ain't going to be Bernie Sanders. He going to pull votes from Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg in those southern states. And the way that things is going now, Joe Biden, he, he's getting the older black vote. Bernie Sanders is getting the younger. Hillary, uh, West College, she only got like 6 or 7% of black people voting for her, uh, Elizabeth Warren. So whoever Michael Bloomberg pulls from, and I'm telling you, it's probably going to be Joe Biden. And now you see the mainstream media getting nervous. People in Obama circle. Coming out talking about how they're gonna try to stop Joe, stop Bernie Sanders from becoming a nominee. Cause last, not last year, but the other time when he had to go against Hillary, like I think a lot, I heard, I did hear a lot of people say that that one of the reasons why they felt like uh, Bernie lost is because not a lot of people knew who he was, yeah. and then a second time around with a little more steam, a little more name recognition. Yeah, that. It would come, and I was like, that's what I'm seeing now. I know a lot of people who were, and even then, like some of the people who were still like, yo, we, they just chanting louder now. Yeah. Like, no, we yeah. ain't told you, we told you you was going to fail last time. This time, we just going to try to out, out talk you, out yeah. loud you, and, see, and it seemed to be working. And see, the problem. And like, also, you got to throw in it, like, people the, and, like Elizabeth and, Warren have been messing themselves up. Yeah. And see, for me, also, with Barack Obama, the one of the reasons why Obama became president of the United States of America is because of the the enthusiasm that his voters had for him, right? That's why he won. If you if you're gonna in the party, they're gonna need somebody who's gonna be able to bring these people together, and that's why I'm saying, like, I think I look at this thing right now at this race and I say the Democrats is going to lose in 2020. That's what I believe right now because Trump approval rating, the Democrats are getting all of this media this last year. Trump approval rating is up to now 49%. And American people need to probably have a spike. I uh, not killed that dude. They, uh, well, that that that'd be probably a mixed bag for him. It probably won't move it either way. But he have a forty nine percent approval rating while the Democrats is getting all this media time, free media, all of these debates. He got a forty nine percent approval rating. But the problem that they're gonna have is this: Bernie Sanders supporters, they absolutely can't stand the establishment of the Democratic Party, and the Democratic Party establishment and the media establishment, what are you going to see them do? They're going to bring Bernie Sanders down, right? And see, it's like if me and you, if, if we had two gangs, right? And two dudes were finna fight each other of our gang. You got to pull your group back. I got to pull my group back. We, but let's say we are part of the same gang, right? And you pull your guys back. I pull my guys back. We let these two dudes fight. But we're not going to jump in or let and one of those dudes do any, you know, underhanded nonsense to each other. Why? Because after these two dudes get through fighting, he got to go over here and fight the other guy. 
So you can't cause too much damage to each other because one of you got to win and go face the other guy. But what you see from the establishment is they do all of these smear tactics against Bernie, attacking him unfairly, right? And then his people retaliate and start ripping Joe Biden up. That's when you seen a little video that came out. I don't know if you... It was a video where they edited the film and made it seem like uh, Joe Biden was a white supremacist. I said, man, that's a Bernie supporter who did that. Because that's what happens. When you attack their candidate unfairly, they're going to come back and do smear jobs on your candidate. And what you're going to get in the end is a very, very, very weak nominee for the party. But it starts with the damn establishment. With their smear jobs against Bernie. And now they out here, way out here with Obama coming out saying he's going to do what he can to stop Bernie Sanders from mm-hmm. winning the nomination. Bernie, uh, one of uh, Obama's biggest strategies that came out talking about how the worst thing the Democrats could do is put Bernie Sanders as the nominee. I said, y'all are out here, out here trying to bury one of your own. You didn't see them do this to Trump, the Republicans in 2016. You know the reason why they didn't? Because they said if this son is happened to win, we're gonna have to get behind we're gonna be behind him and he's gonna be representing our party whether we like it or not. But the Democrats and the establishment, they take the opposite view of things. They're gonna try to destroy Bernie Sanders in any way that they can, but they don't understand that they not when you go at him this way, it's gonna affect his voters. And you're gonna need them people to vote. See, when Hillary Clinton was doing this stuff against him in twenty sixteen. They was like, we don't need Bernie voters. And what you seen on election night was a bunch of crying, ugly white women. That's what you saw. But I'm like, I thought you didn't need them Bernie supporters when y'all were treating them like trash and treating his can- they candidate like trash. You're going to need them. But that's the thing that the Democrats going to have to stop doing is that foolishness. All right, people, hit that like button, subscribe. Last topic, NFL coaches, man. Black coaches, anyway. I think they down to like three now, right? Mm, you got mm, the one from Miami. Tomlin. Yeah, Mike Tomlin. And who else? Damn. It might be three, but I can't think of them. Oh, my coach. Yeah, damn it. Yeah, Los Angeles. Yeah, Los Angeles. Yeah. Three. Um... And people... It's it, only like two offensive coordinators. Yeah. The and one it, for Jackson, not Jacksonville, but the one for Kansas City and the one for Bucks. And and people was talking about this this week in the media, I thought... I mean, unless you, know, you count a defensive de- 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 coordinator, Raheem Morrison. Stephen A. Smith, he came with some stuff on it, and then Bamone Jones. A lot came, of people been coming yeah, with Yeah, coming with some stuff. But Jamel Hill, she wrote something in the Atlantic. And the headline... Was, was it positive or negative? It was dumb. It, the headline was dumb. <laughs> it was clickbait. That's what it was. She says, the NFL owners failed to hire black men because black men haven't shown the ability to lead. Oh, these black I quarterbacks said, here, out here. Now, but now, I, I said, here we go. What about your president? Here we go with some feminist nonsense kicked into this headline. But I want to talk about something. Mike Tomlin won two Super Bowls, right? Yeah. Um, Caldwell got his team to Super Bowl, right? Yeah. Tony Dungy got his team to a Super Bowl and won one, right? Yeah. Russell um, Wilson. Russell Wilson have won. No, but she wasn't talking about quarterback. She was just talking about coach. Yeah, but those are leaders. Those yeah, are leaders. Captains. Uh, yes. You know yes. what I mean? Like, yes. Then you, and see, he, did, the, he did it twice. And, and Kaepernick you, did and, it. And the reason why I said this is feminist nonsense from Jamel Hill is because she was one of the chicks that was out there uh, retweeting that article that black men are the white supremacists of the black neighborhood. And talking about how black men didn't lift their weight and black women all this. You know, the crazy women will be talking about, hey, black women, we the breadwinner of our family. Yeah, because 75% of your family is broken homes. Who are you competing with? Your son? If you the single mother in the household, of course you the breadwinner in there. There ain't nobody else to compete with but your children. He got a pepper up. Yeah, like, come on. So, 
she does this headline, but people say, why, why is it that the NFL is not having these black coaches? And I said, one of the things that we have to think about is the same thing that happened with college players, Smoke. What the NFL normally do, and this is what racist pe- white people normally do with black people. Not black, not just black people, with everybody who are a minority. They judge minorities by their worth example and judge themselves by their best intentions. So we would have in the league at any given year one or two black quarterbacks. They would judge all black quarterbacks because of those two quarterbacks that failed. But then the rest of the league would have three or four good white quarterbacks, and they would judge those judge white quarterbacks by those four. And they forget about all the other bad white quarterback that was in the mm-hmm. league. But if you gave the black players the same opportunity to play as you gave the white players to play the quarterback position, what would happen? What happened this year? The five best quarterbacks in the league was all African-American. Pat Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Lamar Holmes, and Dak Prescott. You mean Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Well, the five best quarterbacks in the NFL. So when you and give then, them an opportunity, don't, don't forget about Teddy came down there and on, Teddy, on Teddy, six yep, games for New Orleans. Yep, Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater came down there and won six games for New Orleans, just like Smoke said. With opportunity, black players showed that not only can they lead, they showed you that they can win. But let's talk about some numbers here. Richard Spencer, the big time racist dude, Richard Spencer, right? He came out and he said, "It ain't that black that white people are doing well, ain't doing well. We are. We just want to keep it that way, right?" Yeah. So let's read some numbers. White people are sixty percent of America's population, but they make up ninety percent of the people in Congress. They make up ninety six percent of all the governors in America. 100 of the top military leaders, the president of the United States and the vice president, they make up 93% of TV executives, 83% of all the teachers in the United States of America, and 84% of college professors. Um, You live in a white supremacist society. And you know what white people want to do? Keep it that way. Keep it that way. That's why they don't want black coaches. Why? Because black people, they feel that black people already got too much power in the NFL already because it's 75% African American. No, they don't want black coaches. And that's why Bamoni Jones, I love what he said. He said, don't ask me why it ain't black coaches in the NFL. Ask the owners because they are the ones who are making sure that it's not any. Mm-hmm. And I said, the, and they don't want, and see, and this is the thing when I we, we talked about Oprah, and I told you that Oprah Winfrey, her audience is middle of America, at home white women. That's who the NFL audience is too. This is why they kept Cap out because Cap was talking this pro black shit, and they afraid. Or how those white people are going to react to him. And the comfort level. This is when Richardson, the owner of the Carolina Panthers, was asking Cam, are oh, you going to get tattoos or grow your hair out? They wanted the respectable black man, the model minority black man, to be the face of the franchise. See, with the black coaches, no. The coach is the face of the franchise. They want that face to be white because of who they trying to sell tickets to. Even though, like, and that, well, it is, but it's a lot of goddamn college football teams. Uh, it, it, it is some black college head coaches, mm-hmm. but not as, not like that in the NFL. It's yeah. like, and now I had to think about, like, the head coach for Stanford, black and for a while, I was like, yo, his Stanford was always a team that was a 10, 10, 11 win team going mm-hmm. to big bowl games, and he never got a offer to go to 
to go be a head coach in the NFL. But he team to do Cliff Kingberry have a eight and win team for about mm-hmm. four or five seasons. He get a say yeah he good enough to be a head coach. Yeah, and and see another thing too that I I, I think that uh we we got to start having a conversation about pertaining to um black coaches in the league and not just black coaches but white coaches too both of them both of them do the same thing smoke they take bad jobs yeah, right like they, they 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 take really bad jobs and we got to be honest you know guys out there <laughs> we've had but other leagues I, we had other leagues XFL in their league last year all of them fell why? You got enough quarterbacks to go around. If you don't mm-hmm. have a quarterback, then you have no way to becoming a winning franchise if you don't have a quarterback. And some of these black coaches out here, see, Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin ended up in a great spot with Ben Rosenberger. Yeah. Right? You but- watch um Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy showed you his coaching bona fides when he was in bu- playing for the Buccaneers. But then he went up there and, and got delivered paid money, right? Mm-hmm. But you watch all of these other black quarterbacks, and I mean black coaches and even white coaches, these guys are getting stuck in some bad coaching situations, and they just taking them because the opportunity is there. When sometimes if you own a winning team, you might need to sit back as that offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and wait to a good job opening open up. The set, like you see from Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels, had the Denver job, took it. He ran away his talent, Brandon Marshall, Jay Cutler. Mm-hmm. But then he gets fired because he's out there trying to do his thing with T-Bow. He can lose his job, and he goes back to New England. The last three years, he would have been a coaching candidate the last three years. He turned down them jobs. Mm-hmm. He like, nah, I'm going to sit around here and wait till something open up. Now, you watch the dude out there in uh, St. Not St. Louis. Not St. Louis, but uh, 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 for the Rams, Los Angeles Rams. He took a job where the year before they got the number one draft pick and it's Jared, Jared Goff. So he he went into a good situation. Mm-hmm. They had good salary cap space. They had defensive player. But all too often you see black coaches, and we remember what's called he got stuck with the Raiders when they wasn't good. All right, now. Hugh. Oh, Hugh, Hugh, Jack- Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson. But then, they, yeah, but I think they hit. No, like they were crazy because that year, it it was just all crazy with Hugh Jackson because that, that first year we had actually did good. No, but it, it had like, Terrell I, Pryor, and then he brought in Palmer, right? Yeah, the next year. Yeah. No, we we actually had Jason Campbell, and then yeah, yeah, it went. I think we had like an eight and eight season, and we were finna keep going. Then we got Terrell Pryor, and then. We you him for a while, but then he traded for no, yeah, he traded for Carson Palmer. And I'm like, Jason Campbell had just went in there and took her to the eight and eight season. Yeah, and let he him, traded a bunch of picks away. Yeah, and then like let Jason Campbell run this offense because mm-hmm. we had little, I think they were dude named was Jacoby Ford it was a breakout yeah. star, and then yeah. they were like, yeah, but the see, whole team with the yeah, shit. Yeah, you see, but he traded all the picks away. But why did he do this? Because he had seen Campbell play for. The, the Redskins and all that, he didn't believe in him. So he mm-hmm. seen Palmer have great years in Cincinnati. So he like, man, I gotta get a quarterback. But but at the end, I, and, but I Palmer get it. Palmer was well, down at that time. Yeah, and down he was yeah. retired. Supposed yeah. to be retired. So, but then you watch Leslie Frazier. Leslie Frazier, he get trapped with who? Christian Ponder. Mm-hmm. Get trapped with Christian Ponder. And for some of them coaches, then I, look at I would the say short that... lease that Hugh Jackson had when he. Coach for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, yeah, him and uh, I think his name was Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkes came in one season in Arizona, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, right. In one season, didn't even get to implement anything, and then yes. they fired him. And, it, but, like, and then look look, look how they did Lovey Smith. Lovey Smith got the Bears to the Super Bowl with Rex Grossman, people. With Rex Grossman. He gets the job down at Tampa, coached one year with Jameis, and they fired him to bring mm-hmm. in the offensive coordinator from the Atlanta Falcons. He was garbage. 
for Tampa Bay. He gets fired. Now he back in Atlanta. And then they bring in the coach from Bruce Arian. Bruce Arian. But that's my thing. That did Bruce Arian win a Super Bowl? No. But they respected him like he did. Mm-hmm. They respected him like he, he did. I don't even know if he well yeah, I think he would have had coach them year they did go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, one. he was. But, but he didn't win. Um because was it was he or was it Ken Winsonhunt? I think it was Ken Winsonhunt. Yeah, I think it was Ken Winsonhunt. Yeah, Ken Winsonhunt. He came down there, but so he, what did he do though? What did Arian do when he got down there? He brought in who? Carson Palmer. Mm-hmm. See, this is when you able to have a quarterback. If you won't have a quarterback, you don't have a team, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have a team, bro. If you ain't got a quarterback, you're going to fail. And that's why we, we talking about the XFL coming up right now. If they ain't find any quarterback, that league is going to fail. And that's why with the black coaches out there, man, just don't be taking these jobs because they throwing the money at you because you ain't going to keep them long. They ain't going to invest in you like – and that's my thing. With a lot of them coaches, they don't get the two, three year, yeah, um, the two, three year time period to yeah. build a yeah. team. Yeah, like you see with Oakland, you got John Gruden. He's saying, "Nah, I'm gonna be here for the next ten years." Yeah, but see how, and yeah, I'm gonna yeah. build. And but, by but, the time I get to that, I'm gonna have a but, great team but, or whatever. But smoke, you 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 took it right to what I wanted to talk about, real quick. You brought up John Gruden, right? But did you see what the NFL owners were saying about the contract that the Carolina Panthers gave their new coach? Yeah, they it hated a, it. It was a seven year. Seven year. They hated it. They said, no, this is. they didn't want to set this precedent. Why they didn't? didn't. They didn't because they know they want to fire guys one, two, three mm-hmm. season in. Now they didn't gave him a seven-year guaranteed money. They and like yo. Gonna come in like no, nah, I want seven years too. I'm better yeah, than him. Yeah, they're gonna say they want this money, but the NFL ain't gonna have the opportunity to fire these coaches the way they want to. Mm-hmm. Especially because you just said the money was guaranteed. Yeah, it guaranteed. That money ain't coming out the books. And see, so you see them out there now. The NFL angry about this because they saying, "Wait a minute, no, player, we like to fire people one or two years, and this thing ain't going right." Now you said this, brother, the default going to start thinking they're going to get seven years, you no, know, 30, 40 million dollars. Mm-hmm. We're going to be stuck with these coaches. And see, that dude got job security down there in Carolina. Yeah, they telling him, so look, you, you know, we're going to let you get your players, all your yeah, players, because you know they Implement how, your system. Yeah, and because and, that what I was, we were talking about, like, and you hear people talk about this a lot, like, yo, you have – the new coach, head coach coming in, they got to teach his system, his play calling. Then you got to have the new people who are either going to be free agents or draft picks coming in. And some people might not fit your system. Because we see that with cornerbacks and stuff, people who get traded because they don't, they only play man coverage or, or they only want to play man coverage. So they had to, but they team running zone. So they trade them to a team that plays zone. Like this is what happened. But, the owners and GM don't want to sit here and wait. What well, the owners? Because the GMs, after a while, they get fired too. Yeah. Unless they Demetri out for the Atlanta Falcons. Mm-hmm. Who should be fired? <laughs> they're, like, they're the only one who don't get fired. But they were like, no, man. It took a while to implement your system and get all the players in line and lock with your head coach. You can't just be firing them after a season or two and think that, yo, their team going to be great. Yeah. All right, people, man. Thank y'all for listening. And we'll see y'all next time. Peace.